Autophagy, what is it? How long do you need to fast in order to achieve autophagy? And do supplements or exogenous ketones or fat break your fast and decrease autophagy? In this video, we're going to break that down, everything from what is autophagy to how to maximize autophagy for your overall health and longevity. So first, let's start with what is autophagy? If you break down the word, it simply means self-eating. If you ever played Pac-Man when you grow up, you get this analogy of what this means and what transpires inside of our body. There's little Pac-Man who are going in, these macrophages are kind of coming around, and they're eating up a lot of the debris that is sitting around the dead cells, the things that we don't want inside of our bodies, during autophagy. So it's a very beneficial process when we're talking about long-term health and longevity. What are some of the benefits? We Autophagy increases mitochondrial health, right? Which means better energy production, better overall skin and, and function. It also decreases cancerous senescent cells, um, which is one of the biggest benefits in terms of like therapeutic purposes as it, as it relates to cancer. And third is it decreases inflammation and actually protects the brain. There's some data with some of the plaque and tau buildup inside of the brain that autophagy can kind of come along and, and clean that process up. So there's a lot of talk amongst people about like, oh, you need to fast for autophagy. And it's interesting to me that most people first go to fasting for its benefits for autophagy. The reality is there's multiple things that can trigger autophagy. So what I wanna do today is put together like your master autophagy plan. If you, if you are sold on autophagy and you want it happening in your body, I wanna give you the exact strategy that I use and also that you can use to maximize autophagy, not just during your fasting window, but throughout your entire day and ultimately throughout your entire life. So the way I like to look at this is there's pillars. The first pillar being like, this is the base of what you should be doing on a daily basis um, to help get this baseline level of autophagy. Then you can accelerate it, and then you can ultimately add on and really throw, throw gasoline on the fire to ramp up autophagy. So first and foremost, I think the most important thing that we need to do to get a baseline level of autophagy is a low carbohydrate diet. Ideally a ketogenic diet. We've seen in research that a ketogenic diet can increase some of these markers of autophagy. And so at a baseline level, if we're eating a ton of processed carbohydrates and sugars, we're really not gonna trigger this response of autophagy. We need to be more on a lower carbohydrate diet. The second thing, and one of the most important things for autophagy, that can help you even more than fasting is exercise. So a lot of people underestimate the value of exercise in terms of its effect on autophagy. We often think, oh, you have to exercise to lose weight or you have to exercise to build muscle. Exercise is a great tool for enhancing autophagy. So if you want autophagy, make sure you do some form of high intensity exercise. I'd much rather you go into the gym and hit it hard for 10 minutes than go into the gym for 60 minutes and give it like a two out of 10 on your effort. Or if you're jumping on the treadmill, I'd rather, rather you walk uh, for 60 minutes. I'd rather you instead do 10 minutes of five sprints of 30 seconds and then rest in between. High intensity, short, efficient workouts are going to help trigger this autophagy response. So that I would consider as like your baseline. That next level is where I wanna introduce fasting, right? And the ultimate million dollar question is how long do I need to fast in order to induce autophagy? And I'm here to tell you that I wish it was as simple as at hour 14 is when autophagy gets triggered, but the reality is it depends on a lot of different factors. It depends on if you're on a low carbohydrate diet and exercising. It depends on your metabolic state. Are you more obese and insulin resistant or are you leaner and insulin sensitive? Um, 
and also at, at some of the other amplifiers that we'll talk about, are you consuming any of them will determine your level of autophagy and when that's triggered. But if we look at data, and this is research from Nature that was published in Nature, you see that about at about 20 hours is where that peaks. So that 20 to 24 hour fast, which is one of the reasons why I also recommend once a week doing a 20 to 24 hour fast. So for me, for those of you that don't know, what I typically do is I will start Sunday night at 5 p.m. And I won't eat again till Monday night at 5 p.m. It's very easy for me to implement this in weekly because Mondays are usually jam packed for me. I try and go to bed early on Sunday and then usually I'm working all the way up until 4 or 5 p.m. And that's when I have my meal. Now, if you're just getting started, this isn't something that you need to implement immediately. Maybe try 18 hours or working your way up to 20 hours instead. But this is where we see it peak. You can see here on the expression of autophagy that there's it's not just there's only benefits at 20 hours. There's still going to be benefits at 12 hours, at, at 14 hours, at 16 hours, and at 18 hours. But we see the peak at around 20 hours on that fast. And of course, if you were to continue that on, it would probably be an upward trajectory even higher. But in this study, they fed them after the 20 hour fast. And so you see autophagy go back down and then it goes back up, right? So again, you, autophagy, a lot of it is regulated by insulin. If insulin is high, autophagy is low. If insulin's low, autophagy is typically high. And one of the reasons that happens is when insulin is low, there's like a light switch that goes on in our body called AMPK. AMPK. AMPK is a light switch that signals to our body that we have quote unquote low fuel. This happens when we exercise, we trigger AMPK. This happens when we're on a low carbohydrate diet. It also happens during fasting. And when AMPK is triggered, it also increases this process known as autophagy. And so again, I would recommend at minimum, you aim for 14 to 18 hours of fasting several days per week. And ideally once per week, you wanna try and get an 18 to maybe even a 24 hour fast if you really wanna amplify the effects of autophagy. So now that we know that our baseline is this low carbohydrate diet and exercise, we want to ramp it up and incorporate in some bits of fasting to really accelerate our autophagy. The question is, what are some things, what are some, some gas that we can pour on this fire to really amplify it even further? The first one might surprise you. Uh, and it's something that many of you drink and it's coffee. There's data showing that possibly these polyphenols that are in uh, coffee may actually trigger autophagy. So maybe there's some benefit to that morning coffee that you've been drinking other than just the caffeine that you get or you need, many of you need, in order to get your day started. So coffee has been shown to trigger autophagy. Another one is supplements, blood glucose lowering sups supplements that help lower blood glucose. One of my favorites that I love to use is something called berberine. Berberine triggers this same thing called AMPK and it helps lower your blood glucose. So if you're ever eating a meal that's a little bit higher in carbohydrates, and you take berberine before it, studies show that your glucose won't go as high. So it might look something like this. If you normally eat, say, sushi, your glucose might go really high and then come back down. Well, if you take berberine, I'm going to put berberine in blue. If you take berberine, it might look something like this. So berberine helps lower your blood glucose um, even, before, even when you eat a higher amount of carbohydrates. So it's something that I highly recommend. You do not want to take it on an empty stomach. And I'd recommend around 500 milligrams. There's a new form of berberine called dihydroberberine that's been making its rounds. And I think you can supplement at about 200 to 250 milligrams. Um, there's even studies, which is crazy, showing berberine is more effective 
than metformin for type 2 diabetics. So really interesting research. But again, anything else that helps lower blood glucose can enhance autophagy. The last thing that I want to look at is exogenous ketones. So I've talked a lot about exogenous ketones before. What are they beneficial for? What aren't they beneficial for? There's actually data showing that exogenous ketones may lower blood glucose, but also exogenous ketones themselves are signaling molecules that may enhance autophagy. And there's data showing that key, administering exogenous ketones increases autophagy. So this is a great depiction for me if you're someone who's trying to maximize autophagy and get a lot of these benefits that we talked about before in terms of mitochondrial health, maybe decreasing cancer uh, senescent cells, decreasing inflammation, protecting the brain. This might be a great protocol to implement. And again, it's not something you need to implement everything all at once. At baseline, you want to have a lower carbohydrate diet and incorporate some form of exercise. Uh, be efficient with your exercise. I'm someone who I don't love to exercise. I love the feeling that exercise gives me, but I try and be as efficient as possible with the exercise that I do. So get in and get out. Fasting is your next level, right? A lot of people start with fasting, but fasting should be that next level. And it's something that can be incorporated in, again, depends on where you're at. I'd say at minimum 14 hours to 18 hours, that's pretty standard or easy to hit but you start to see some great benefits around that 18 to 24 hours. It's just not something obviously you'd want to do every single day. I don't think fasting 20 to 24 hours every single day is ideal for some other areas of metabolic health, but in terms of uh, autophagy, maybe once or twice a week may be extremely beneficial. And then throwing some fuel on the fire again, coffee, any blood glucose disposal agents. One of my favorites is berberine. And then exogenous ketones can also help amplify that autophagy response. So let me know in the comments what you learned from this. And if you do any of these or you incorporate all of them inside of your daily routine, because again, no matter where you're at, it doesn't matter as long as you're incorporating in some of them to get the benefits of autophagy. If you know anyone that would benefit from this information or anyone that loves to talk about autophagy, make sure you share this video with them. And until next time, I'll talk to you guys.